My best friend always projects her insecurities onto me. Should I break up with her? My best friend and I have known each other for exactly two years. We met in college and hit it off right away. We're both Latinas and we come from really big families. I have two other sisters and we get along really well. We always hype each other up and have each other's backs. A few months after I started my friendship with my best friend, let's call her Lucia. Lucia started showing some really toxic qualities. Sometimes I think I'm just reading too much into it or overreacting. So you let me know. First of all, she would start talking bad about my sisters in front of me. She would make comments like, wow, your sister's gained weight or wow your sister has cellulite when she first did this i would just defend my sisters but then i realized that that just made her want to keep talking more trash so if she ever said anything about my sisters i wouldn't say anything at the time our friendship started i had a really big crush on this guy he and i went to the same gym and i never had the courage to speak to him not until my sister convinced me to i finally spoke to him at the gym and we actually hit it off we would work out together every now and then and he finally asked me out on a date the day of our date my best friend came over to my house and while i was getting ready she started saying really weird things at first she told me that i should wash my hair because it looked oily i told her my hair was freshly washed when i looked at myself in the mirror i could see her reflection and she just rolled her eyes at me this is when things started clicking part two is up my best friend projects her insecurities on me should i break up with her i could see through the mirror that she had rolled her eyes at me then she started making other comments about my appearance mind you i'm getting ready for a date when i showed her the outfit that i was gonna wear she said it was too revealing and that i would probably scare him off it wasn't even revealing it just showed my legs it was a cute sundress with the cardigan on top i told her i thought i looked cute and then she said Aya tu amiga. as i'm finishing up my hair and my makeup she says wow you're gonna wear that much makeup but the way she said it was so aggressive, I actually took off the lipstick I was wearing. Instead, I just put on lip balm. I looked at her and she had a smile on her face. It was like she was happy she finally got to me. The date went really well and he actually turned into my boyfriend a few weeks later. And guess what? My best friend started judging everything about him. The first time she met him, she started saying, wow, I think he's balding, which he isn't. And even if he was, I wouldn't care. She also started making comments about him staring at other girls, something I never even noticed that he did. And I would know I'm with him all the time. It's like she was trying to plant all these insecurities in my head one day lucia and my boyfriend and i are in his car we were heading to the movie theaters when lucia says wow you put on way too much perfume it's giving me a headache that's when my boyfriend told her that if it bothered her that much she should just go home and out of nowhere lucia swung her fist at him she actually tried to attack him part three is up story time about how i almost got kidnapped by my online boyfriend so a little background information i was 16 and in 11th grade so a year before this all happened i posted a picture on instagram saying add me on snapchat if you want to be friends yes i was that person anyway so this really cute guy adds me on snapchat and after about three months talking he said that he wants to meet me in person and he didn't sound sus at all so i was like sure so we met at this park that was like 30 minutes away and we met there around six o'clock so when the sun was setting and he was super nice it was super romantic well then we went to his house we watched a movie and we did the nasty so after that he asked me if i want a drink and what i could have swore was 20 minutes later i wake up in an abandoned farm shed with no clothes or anything so i start screaming my head off i don't have my phone or anything so i start to run and then he grabs me he says if you try to run or you try to scream i am going to kill you life for part Part two about how I almost got kidnapped by my online boyfriend. So like I said, I wake up in this abandoned farm shed. I don't have no clothes. I don't have a phone. So I try to run and he grabs me. He says that if you run, I will kill you. So I was like, okay, fine. What do you want from me? So he starts putting on lingerie and tells me to also put some on so we can take pictures together. What the actual, you know what? So after that, he starts crying and he starts telling me his whole life story and how he's not who I think he is. Turns out that he's 32 and he just goes online pretending that he's 17 years old. So I just try to comfort him, right? It ends up working. He brings me my clothes, tells me to run or else he's going to once again kill me. So I run. I go to this gas station, get picked up by the police, find my parents. Luckily for me, I paid attention to where everything was. He was arrested. He's still in prison to this day and I got grounded for three months. Story time about how my parents caught me selling my undies online. This claim is now my story time of sending me on Instagram. I'm extremely, extremely spoiled. My family is extremely rich. This allows me to buy whatever I want. The problem is my dad caught me sneaking out of my window, so he grounded me for two months and took away my allowance. And my allowance is a lot. My dad usually gave me $150 a week. With that money, I would go to Starbucks every single day before school. And I would also treat my friends to Starbucks every now and then. More like every day. My friends and I would go to restaurants and have fancy dinners and lunches. And I also had a car. I would also go shopping almost every single Friday with my friends. I would get manicures and pedicures. And I could basically buy myself whatever I wanted just by asking my dad for the money. But now that I was grounded, that was not going to happen. 
By the way, I'm 20 now, but this was three years ago, so I was 17 when all of this happened. I can confidently say that I was like the queen bee in my high school. Number one, I was in the cheerleading squad. Number two, I was super pretty popular and had lots of money. Therefore, everyone wanted to hang out with me. I knew that I needed to maintain my status and also the life that I had become accustomed to. Not being able to go to Starbucks every single morning really made me depressed. That probably made you roll your eyes, but I said what I said. Now, there was no way I was going to go get a job somewhere. You would never catch me working at a cafe or a restaurant or something like that. So I knew I had to start making my own money online somehow. I did some research and found out that people would sell pictures and video of their feet. So I signed up for this stupid website and decided to do it. The problem was that by the end of the week, I had only made $46. This was clearly not enough. So I did some more research and found out that you could actually sell your undies. So I took my last $200, went to Victoria's Secret and stocked up on undies. And this is when things get really fun. Part two is up. Part two of how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimers did not waste our time and set me on Instagram. So I took my last $200, went to Victoria's Secret, and stocked up on undies. I signed up to this website, and within a week, I had about 80 orders. So that means in one week, I sold $2,000 worth of my own underwear. This is when I realized that I could charge way more than I had been. So I doubled the price, and the following week, I made $4,000. So here's the first mistake I made. I decided to tell my girlfriends about it, and they decided to sign up and start selling their own undies. After after a month, all of my friends and I were selling our undies, and we were all making bank. This also meant that we were spending lots of money. I started buying designer handbags and shoes. One of my friends even put a down payment to a car, and her parents started asking her tons of questions. And so did mine. Part 3 is up. Part 3 of how my parents caught me selling my undies online. Disclaimers are not my story time, but send me on Instagram. When my parents realized that I was buying all these designer bags and shoes, they started asking me questions. I was strong and I kept my mouth shut. Now my friends, on the other hand, who were also selling their undies, one of them got questioned by her parents and she gave up all the information. She even told her parents that I was the mastermind behind everything and that I had told all the other girls to start selling their undies, which was true. So it was official I had been caught. Of course, my mom's friend runs straight over to my house and she starts spilling all the beans to my parents. My dad and mom came straight to my room and started rummaging through everything. That's when they find all my purses, my shoes, had stacks of cash in my drawers and under my mattress. All of my friends got grounded, but my parents decided to take it a step further. They were so disgusted with me that they actually kicked me out of the house. But the good news is, I had a lot of money, so I got myself a really nice apartment. So jokes on my parents. With all the money that I made, I decided to start a side hustle. I have my own employees and run my business from my house. My parents and I still talk, and my dad's even invested into my new company. When I look back at what I did, I do feel shame. But at the same time, I've become so successful from that money. What should I invest in next? Story time, my best friend slept with my boyfriend on my birthday. So a little background information. I was 16 and a sophomore in high school. Well, I have this best friend who we are going to call Sarah. Her and I became super close over the summertime, but she was like on and off best friends with this other girl who we're going to call Mackenzie. But I have this boyfriend who I was also really on and off with. And Sarah knew about all the problems within our relationship. Well, I guess I underestimated how close Sarah and Mackenzie were. Because everything that I told Sarah, she went back and she told Mackenzie. And not to mention, Mackenzie was really close with my boyfriend. So of course, she told my boyfriend everything that I was saying. This ended up causing a huge fight between my boyfriend and I. Well, the night before my birthday, my boyfriend and I were going back and forth arguing. And around 12 a.m. on my birthday, I forced myself to fall asleep. And at around 1 a.m., I woke up to 20 Snapchat notifications, all from my boyfriend. And when I opened them, I saw the worst thing ever. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend slept with my boyfriend on my birthday. So like I said, I woke up at around 1 a.m. to 20 Snapchat notifications from my boyfriend. And I saw the absolute worst thing ever. The first five notifications were just him calling me names. And then all the other ones were just him doing stuff with my best friend. And you guys can already guess what I mean by doing stuff. So at this point, I was heartbroken, I was pissed off. But of course, because I gotta have the receipts, I went and took a video off my sister's phone of everything that he sent me. In the morning, I woke up to a text from an unknown number, and it turned out to be my boyfriend's best friend saying that him and Sarah were now together. So my boyfriend asked me to meet up and apologize. So I met him at this park, and he apologized to me, telling me that he wanted to get back together with me. But I told him to KMA, and I left. Then Sarah came to my house and keyed my car. And then we fought on my front lawn. And then after that, she was texting me about how she was coming back to my house. Like for part three. Part three about how my best friend slept with my boyfriend. So like I said, she came to my house and she keyed my car. And I caught her, so I went outside. We fought on my front lawn. After she left, she kept sending me messages saying that she was coming back to my house so we could fight again. But she was blocked, so I didn't get any of the messages. 
And then my ex came to my house and brought me flowers. And this was all in a span of one day. So because it was my birthday party, my cousins were at my house. And I already told them everything that happened. So they went outside and they fought him. Well, then I ended up sending all the videos to his parents, her parents, his siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins who loved me. Then I also decided to take legal action and I sent the cops all of the screenshots of Sarah harassing me. And my sister got a video of us fighting, so I sent that to them too. Well, since she was 18 and I literally just turned 16, she got three months in county jail for minor harassment and minor physical altercations. So in the end, I think I won. Story time about how my boyfriend shames me for having cellulite. Disclaimer is not my story time with Cinnamon on Instagram. I'm 24 years old and my boyfriend is 21. According to him, he has never been with any girl who's had cellulite before, or even an ounce of body fat. Yes, I know what you're thinking, he's a total asshole, which in that sense, he is. But the rest of the time, he's completely fine and actually sweet. We met last year at a friend's party. At the party, I instantly fell in love with him. I thought he was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. And it was reciprocated. I saw him from across the room and he made eye contact. A few minutes later, he walked over to me and just struck up a conversation. I know that people present themselves the way they want to be seen, especially when they're trying to impress someone they're attracted to. He started telling me about how he's studying to be a doctor, how he volunteers at animal shelters, and that every single weekend he also volunteers at the soup kitchen. Everything he said was absolutely perfect. By the end of the night, he had asked me out on a date and I said yes. I did explain to him that I didn't want anything serious and he said that was totally fine. I was trying to focus on my studies, so having a boyfriend was not in my plans. But after we went on seven dates, he asked me to be his girlfriend. He wouldn't take no for an answer. After about a month, I finally said yes. Mind you, at this point, he hadn't seen me naked, not even in a bathing suit. The very night that I said yes to being his girlfriend, he asked me to come over to his place. He made a whole gourmet dinner, even bought super expensive wine. So we ended up doing it for the first time that night. The next morning when I woke up, the first thing he said to me was, do you ever exercise? I was shocked. Part two is up. Story time about how my boyfriend shames me for having cellulite. Disclaimer is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. That's when he said point blank, super serious, do you ever exercise? I just stared at him. I had literally just woken up in his bed after the first time we ever did it. Then I thought he must be joking. So I started to laugh a little and then he says no seriously do you ever exercise i said sometimes then he told me you should really try to work out at least five times a week i went home and finally texted him saying that i wasn't comfortable with the way he spoke to me that's when he said that what he said to me was completely normal and that i shouldn't be offended this was all in text by the way that's when he sends me another text message saying you know you wouldn't have as much cellulite as you do if you didn't eat so much fast food and if you exercise five times a week like i told you i didn't reply to him for the rest of the day later that day he shows up to my apartment and says you know i should feel comfortable enough to tell you what i think about you he somehow ended up making me feel bad and I ended up apologizing. Obviously after that I became really self-conscious about my cellulite and my entire body. So anytime we were together I would always stay under the covers. By the way my boyfriend doesn't have a great body. He's super soft and pudgy. Last week he told me that he had abs though. Part 3 is a story time about how my boyfriend shames me for having cellulite. Disclaimer is now my story time is sending me on Instagram. One day he pulls up his shirt and says look I have abs. Which no he doesn't. He's super soft and has a thick layer of fat on it. I smirked and he said what? And I said you don't have abs. Then he says yes I do. I'm in better shape than you. By the way, he said this in front of his friends, so I was super embarrassed and stayed quiet the entire day. He finally went to drop me off and I was so happy to be home, but he decided to come upstairs with me. He got straight into my PJs, and when I came out of my bedroom, he says, wow, your cellulite's getting worse by the day. That's when I finally broke. I turned around and started yelling at him. I told him he had no right to talk about my body the way that he did, and that all he does is objectify me. He started laughing and said, wow, those are big words, and that when we met, he thought that I was in better shape. All my clothes obviously tricked him. I'm 5'4 and I weigh 130 pounds. I am by no means fat, but the way that he was bullying me was making me think that I was. That's when I told him that he was the fat one, and that he had a big huge beer belly. I also told him that his face was super round, but that didn't bother me. Oh yeah, and that his hairy back was gross. Then he said, wow, I can't believe you're attacking my physical appearance. Then he stormed out of my apartment, and as soon as he left, I felt happy. We haven't spoken in four days. I'm afraid that if he asked me to get back with him, I will. But I should just break up with him, right? What should I do? Story time. My boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So a little background information, I was 17 and a junior in high school, and my boyfriend and I had been dating for a year. But just a little backstory about when we got together. So there were definitely some red flags that I missed, okay? One of them being that he had a girl best friend. And I don't care what y'all have to say if that makes me insecure or what, but coming from someone who has been the girl best friend, I knew this was not good at all. 
especially whenever we first started dating and she was still being super friendly with him, meaning she would hold his hand, she would hang on him 24 seven. And when I told him I was super uncomfortable with that and I felt like there needed to be some boundaries, he was like, um, yeah, I told you what it was whenever we got together. So if you don't like that, then just break up with me. Looking back on it now, that was also a red flag because I feel like he was telling me to break up with him so that way he didn't have to break up with me, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend cheated on me with the girl best friend. So like I said, she would still hang all over him and he pretty much told me, if you don't like that, then you can leave. Obviously, I did not want to leave because I liked him and he was my boyfriend. So I just kept putting up with it and eventually, you know, we got six months into our relationship. So at that point, I'm thinking maybe I have a little bit more authority, you know, to be like, hey, I don't like the way that she acts around you. You guys can't hang out like that anymore. And they would hang out alone together. He would take her to dinner. Which I literally tried telling him that the stuff that they do together is relationship stuff. And he was like, that's not true at all because we did all this stuff before you and I even got together. So anyways, like I said, six months in, I'm like, hey, I don't like the way that you guys are hanging around each other. Once again, he gives me the same excuse. So he pretty much said that he didn't care. And the one night him and I were supposed to hang out, but he canceled on me last minute. And her and I didn't get along and she never Snapchatted me before. But then I get a Snapchat of her and him making out at his house. Part three about why I will never, ever, ever babysit ever again. So like I said, I picked up this stack of towels and a camera that was recording fell out of it. And while I was home later that night, I was waiting for my mom to get home when I got a call from Will. And if you don't remember who that is, that's Autumn's dad. And of course I wasn't going to answer the phone because I was super weirded out and low-key scared. But then he left a voicemail. And he was like, hey, so, um, I know you have the camera. And this is kind of awkward, but I'm going to need it back. I can pay you whatever you want. And I would prefer that we don't tell anybody about this. Sometimes I'm just really amazed at how stupid people are because as soon as my mom got home, I showed her the camera and I let her listen to the voicemail. So my mom called over Autumn's mom. So they called the police and Autumn's mom kept trying to call Will, but his phone was going straight to voicemail. And she was like, yeah, he begged me not to come over here whenever you called. It's been a week since this happened and Autumn's dad is currently running from the cops. Story time about how I got my sister's boyfriend to fall in love with me and I do not regret it. Disclaimer is not my story time. Send me on Instagram. My sister and I have always been rivals since we were kids. I'm 22 and she's 24. We were always super close in age, which means we competed for everything, including our parents' attention, clothes and makeup, and somehow we always ended up liking the same boys. When I turned 16, she was going away for college and I actually started to appreciate her a lot more. We started calling each other every single day and I realized that I really miss my sister. We actually got closer living further away than together. My parents were also really happy with this because her and I would not get along when she lived at home. One weekend, I decided to go stay with her on her campus, and that's when things got interesting. My sister was living it up. She was partying all the time. I told her that I didn't really like that she was partying so much. I told her that I didn't feel comfortable with her passing out at random guys' places. She told me that I was overreacting and not to tell my parents. But I got home and told my parents everything. This is when our relationship became bad once again. After this, my sister didn't trust me, and basically, she became my enemy. She started criticizing everything about me the clothes that I'd wear, so I had to distance myself from her. My parents wanted her to move back in with us because she wasn't doing well in school. She was clearly partying instead of studying. Of course, my sister refused to move back home, so my parents basically cut her off. I got a new boyfriend at this time, and my sister would flirt with him anytime she came home. I even caught them hugging one time. Part two is a story time about how I stole my sister's boyfriend and don't regret it. Disclaimer is not my story time and send me on Instagram. When I walked in on my boyfriend and my sister hugging, I knew I had to do something. I went straight to my parents and told them what she was doing. My dad pulled her into her room and talked to her, but she totally denied everything. She said that she was not flirting with my boyfriend, but we all knew that was a lie. Even my boyfriend was honest with me and told me that she had been flirting with him openly. That's when my boyfriend told me he didn't even want to come over to our house because my sister made him that uncomfortable. And when I told my parents this, they felt so embarrassed. They called my boyfriend and personally apologized to him. He was actually so sweet though. He would come visit me to my house and we would just chill out in his car while my sister was inside watching us through the window. Yeah, she was crazy. He and I eventually broke up because he went off to live in another country. And guess what? My sister said that she knew he never loved me and that's why he left me. She was being so mean at the time. A few years later, she started dating someone. Of course, at the time, it never occurred to me to even flirt with him or act the way that she did with my boyfriend. You see, I'm above all that. But as soon as I got a new boyfriend, she would start flirting with him. And she had no shame about it. This became a running problem in my family. My parents 
would ask her to leave me alone and my boyfriends and she would say that she did but no she didn't oh yeah and her boyfriend broke up with her because he noticed that she would flirt with a lot of guys apparently she did it even in front of him so when she finally got a new boyfriend i decided that i was gonna do the same thing to her i started flirting with her boyfriend a little not a lot but i definitely made sure to tell him i thought he was attractive after a few weeks he started saying things back to me and i knew that it was working i never did it in front of my sisters and my parents because i didn't want them to get mad at me so instead i got her boyfriend to basically fall in love with me i already knew everything about him because my sister would tell me so i just started telling him i liked the same things he did it got to the point where one day he kissed me and i didn't tell my parents i made sure to get his hopes up part three is up I got my sister's boyfriend to fall in love with me, her life turned to misery. No, I didn't regret it. Disclaimer, this is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. One day, I went up to my sister and told her that her boyfriend had kissed me. First, she thought I was making it up to make her jealous. She told me I could never compete with her and that she was the more beautiful sister out of the two of us. Which is wrong. So I handed her my phone so that she could see all the messages that her boyfriend and I had been sending each other. And that's when she lost it. She started wailing on me. She started slapping and kicking me. My parents ran into her room and asked her what was wrong. I told my parents that I treated my sister the way she treated me. She would always go after my boyfriend's flirt with them and try to get them to break up with me. Of course, my parents didn't agree with me, so they were really angry. They separated us, but my sister went crazy. She called her boyfriend and told him to come over. Obviously, he didn't know that she already knew at the time. And when he came over, she started beating him up. He grabbed a pan from the kitchen and started swinging at him. She actually ended up giving him a concussion. After that, she begged for his forgiveness, but he still broke up with her. At the end of the day, he ended up leaving her. She was so stupid for begging him to stay with her. Her boyfriend even asked me if we could be together, and I told him no. I told him that the whole time I had just been playing him just to get back at my sister, which I know is so cruel, but he deserved it. After that, my sister and I decided to make peace. She told me that she wouldn't mess with my boyfriend anymore and that she would stop being evil but after a month of having my new boyfriend i found her flirting with him too i told her if she didn't stop that i would make her life miserable once again i'm pretty sure she has a boyfriend but she doesn't want to tell my family because she knows that i'll go after him and i would probably end up making him fall in love with me too but at this point i just don't know what to do what should i do she's so evil and i want to make her life miserable bye about how i stole my best friend's boyfriend so a little background information i was 14 and in eighth grade and we're gonna call my best friend ashley Ashley was really nice at first. She always had my back when I needed her. But then out of nowhere, she started being super rude to me. She turned into one of those pick-me girls that would always make fun of you in front of other guys, talk crap about you to the guy that you liked. Well, the one day I hear her talking shit about me whenever we were in class, and everybody could hear her. She was literally on the whole other side of the class. And I asked her, hey, like, why were you talking about me? She was like, no, I was talking about a different girl. And I had a pretty unique name, so I was like, who else in the school could you have been talking about? But I just brushed it off. Well, then we were in algebra class and I heard her talking shit about me again. How I do my makeup so bad and I can never get a boyfriend. Like, I'm so ugly and all that stuff. Well, she thought that I wasn't mad at her. So she came up to me the one day and was like, OMG, I have a boyfriend. Like for part two to about how i stole my best friend's boyfriend so like i said she would talk shit about me all the time and i only confronted her that one time so she thought that we were all good so the one day before class starts she runs up to me she's like oh my god you'll never guess what i have a boyfriend she's like he's so cute he's really popular he's on the football team and i was like girl whatever nobody cares until I'm sitting in my first class of the day and I remember that she made out with my boyfriend last year. I forgave her, of course. But because karma was taking a little bit too long, I figured I had to do something about it myself. So my plan was to hook up with her boyfriend. Do I feel bad about it? Absolutely not. So I went to my school's football game and guess who I saw? My best friend's boyfriend. She couldn't make it that night. She had something to do. So I had him all to myself. So I went up to him, I started flirting with him, and I was like, oh, you should break up with your girlfriend and date me instead. But then he was like, I thought you guys were best friends and I would never date you. Like for part th part three about how I stole my best friend's boyfriend. So like I said, I went to the football game. She wasn't there because she had something else to do. I went up to him, I started flirting. I told him that he should break up with her and date me instead. And I also said that she was a bitch and a whole bunch of other stuff. And he was like, why would you say that about your best friend? And he was like, I would never date you. And I had a feeling this would happen. So I had photoshopped a picture of her and this guy that she sits next to in her lab class. And I showed it to him and I was like, see, she's cheating on you. So he was pissed off. He gave me his number. And the next day he came over to my house. We cuddled, watched movies, we kissed. After three months, Ashley found out. We hadn't talked to each other since then. But now I am 16 in 10th grade and still with her ex-boyfriend. Funny thing though, the picture that I photoshopped with her and that guy, she's literally dating him now. So you're welcome, I guess. But anyway, she still goes around talking shit on me. I mean, who can blame her? I did steal-
Every time about how my boyfriend tried to cheat on me with my fake Instagram account, not knowing it was really me. Disclaimer is not my story time with sending me on Instagram. The funny thing is that when my boyfriend and I got together, I did not want the relationship. He begged me for six months to be his girlfriend. And you see, the only reason why I didn't want to was because I knew that he was a player. Every single one of my friends had basically gone out with him. I was just the last girl in the group to go out with him because I always kept saying no. And looking back, he was definitely obsessed with me because I never gave in to him. I was the girl that he couldn't have. During those six months, he would hit me up on Instagram every single day. Anytime I posted a story he would automatically reply to it he would like and comment on all of my pictures we also had a lot of mutual friends so we would end up at the same events and parties and every time that he would see me in public he would zero in on me he would basically ignore all the other girls at the party and make me feel like i was the only one there and he would constantly compliment me and tell me how beautiful i was how attracted to me he was how i was just so different from all the other girls that he had gone out with trust me i knew that he was love bombing me but eventually after six months i was like he's got to be honest so i decided to give him a chance and let me tell you he has been the perfect boyfriend he's so sweet and considerate my parents absolutely adore him and my mom never likes anybody see i come from a latino family one day i decided to make a second instagram account it was just an inspiration account i posted cute outfits of other people i liked makeup nails so one day i see my boyfriend in my dms part two is that of how my boyfriend tried to cheat on me with my fake instagram and not knowing it was actually me disclaimers did on my story time with cinnamon instagram that's when i opened up my account to see that my boyfriend had dm me first i thought he was joking when i clicked into the message and i read it my heart and my stomach sank he was taking a shot he thought that i was some sort of influencer now when i created the second account I was already with him. I really didn't tell him that I was creating it. It was just for fun for myself. I did start gaining followers. I did put in a lot of work into this account, but it was pretty much a visual diary just for me. It just so happens that other girls liked the aesthetic and I started gaining a lot of followers. I had about 10,000. But here's my theory. Since my account is probably listed to be in the area that he is, probably popped up on one of his mutual lists or his explore page or something like that because I was trying to figure out how he found the account. The message read, Hey, beautiful. I really love your pictures and love your style. I'm also really into fashion. Low no he's not and i would love to take you out on a date you know all the good spots around the city let me know if you're down so when i clicked on my boyfriend's profile and realized that he had hidden all of the pictures we had together so if he had dm'd any girl and she went to look at his profile she would automatically assume that he's single because he doesn't have a picture of another girl instead of freaking out and calling him i decided to keep cool said i called my mom she told me to play along with the conversation so that's what i did messaged him back and said wow i really love your pictures and your style too what's your favorite designer he replied louis vuitton ew by the end of the conversation we had a date for that night and i showed up part three is up every time about how my boyfriend tried to cheat on me with my fake instagram account not knowing it was me this claim is now my story time sending me on instagram At the end of the conversation he thought he was having with some other girl we had decided to go on a date and like i said i was playing along so i was super nice to him i complimented all the clothes that he wore i told him that he looked so attractive in his pictures and that i was really looking forward to meeting him he chose a restaurant downtown and of course he did because i live nowhere near that area in fact he and i never go out on dates there so he knew that he wouldn't see anybody he knew here's where it gets actually really funny this man sent a picture of the outfit that he wanted to wear brown fedora with the louis vuitton monogram on it a louis vuitton belt black pants and a black shirt so i replied saying that's perfect i'll wear a black dress and my favorite louis vuitton purse but i was still heartbroken but here's what i did i asked my mom to come with me to the restaurant her and i did our makeup our hair and we got dressed up really really nice and i decided to wear a black dress my mom actually happened to have an old louis vuitton purse in her closet that she never wore so i grabbed it my mom and i show up to the restaurant and my boyfriend is already there so i decided to walk in and turn around so that way he could only see my back my mom decided to stay outside of the restaurant but she knew to come in as soon as he saw me i suddenly feel a tap on my shoulder and that's when i turn around he says oh hey babe what are you doing here the look on this man's face was a pure fear that's when i hand up my phone so that he could see that the account that he was messaging was actually mine that's when he says you lied to me he was mad at me for pretending to be somebody else then he started apologizing and then he said that he knew the whole time and that he was just joking around i broke up with him and haven't spoken to him since Story time about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep so I cut her hair. So a little background information. I was 14 and in 8th grade and my best friends and I were having a sleepover. And right before we had went to sleep, we were all talking about this one TikTok trend that was going around. It's like this trend where girls would go and put wax on their boyfriends while they were sleeping and then take it off. Well, I didn't think anything of it, so that night I went to sleep. I should have knew this was going to happen because I'm always the butt of the joke whenever it comes to our friend group. Like, I'm always the one getting picked on. Like, there was this one thing that my friend Ashley saw online. It was like, if you put white nail polish on your teeth, it would make your teeth whiter. So who did they decide to try it out on? Yup, me. And yes, I could have said no, but these were my best friends. I didn't think that they would intentionally hurt me. Anyway, so like I said, I go to sleep and all of a sudden I wake up in the middle of the night to something very, very, very hot on my face. I open my eyes and all of my friends are standing above me with their flashlights on. Like for part two. 
Part two about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow while I was asleep so I cut her hair. So like I said, went to sleep, didn't think anything was gonna happen, and then I wake up and all of them are standing above me with their flashlights on. And then I realized that Ashley has a stick in her hand. Once I realized that there was wax on the other end of the stick, I started screaming. So then Kelsey decides to cover my mouth. She's like, shh, it's not that bad, I promise, like, don't worry. I get up real quick, I run to the bathroom, and there's like this pink transparent wax on my eyebrow. It was about 3 a.m. and we're all sitting there trying to find ways to get this wax off of my fucking eyebrow. Well, then Amber goes, I'm tired of this, grabs it and rips it off my forehead. So I'm crying at this point. Like I'm in eighth grade, I'm about to have my glow up and y'all gotta ruin it with taking my eyebrow off. So nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night because they thought that I was gonna do something to them. So I acted all cool. I was like, no, it's fine. I can just draw it on. When in reality, I was going to cut this bitch's hair. Like for part three. Part three about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night. I acted like it was okay because I was plotting in my head that I was going to cut one of their fucking ponytails off. So I go over to their house next week. And every single day that week, they were telling me how good my drawn on eyebrow looked. Um, It didn't actually look good. And none of my hairs were growing back. So around 12 o'clock, all of us are ready to go to bed. I'm laying down pretending that I'm sleeping and they think I'm sleeping. So they're over there talking shit about me on her bed, Ashley's bed. I wasn't sure which one's eyebrow I should rip off because the one ripped off my eyebrow, but then the other one put the wax on my eyebrow. They were like, she's sleeping. I don't think she's going to do anything. She doesn't even have the balls to do anything. So around four in the morning, everybody is dead asleep. I get up and Ashley had her hair in a ponytail. So that was easy enough. I grabbed a pair of scissors out of my book bag and I cut her hair off. 